All right. Well, we're going to start in. We're going to start right now. <laughs> um, hi, this is Allison Malika, and I want to welcome you to Google um, Education on Air conference. I I actually presented at the first uh, Google Education on Air conference a few years back. It was pretty fun. So I'm glad to be back today, and especially. Uh, happy that Jennifer Shepard is here with us. So I'm going to let Jen introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Sheffer. Um, Allison, thank you so much for inviting me to co-host with you. Um, just for viewers, uh, I am the Massachusetts Google Educator Group leader, and I'm also the mobile learning coach in Burlington, Massachusetts. We're a K-12 Google Apps for Education district. We're also a one-to-one -one iPad district. And um, we are successfully integrating Google Apps in all of our classrooms. Um, and today we're going to be learning from Allison the power of Google Draw, which I think is um, somewhat underutilized by a lot of teachers. And in today's training session, Allison is going to show us really how we can leverage this tool across the curriculum um, in virtually every discipline and grade level. So I am personally really excited to uh, learn from her, and she's going to give us some great ideas. Um, we're going to learn how we can promote student creativity through this tool and really encourage critical thinking and unleash the magic of Google Draw. Um, so I'm excited to be here. We're going to learn a lot, and I, I think we're ready to, to start, if that's okay with you, Allison. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a screen share, and I, I just want to add that um, it's especially good that you're here with your perspective because you are one of the uh, keenest people for student engagement and uh, leveling up in terms of the, not only the use of technology, but just making learning fun and engaging um, and effective. So I think that we're on the same page, and um, I'm hoping that uh, throughout this uh, prepared presentation that uh, we have this conversation going to to highlight some of the key things that we're we're sharing can you see my screen okay I sure can yep all right so um, I, I didn't mention this but I am a Google certified trainer education trainer um, teacher and even took the Google app certified administrator exam so um, I don't do much of that. I teach virtually at the VLAX Virtual Learning Academy here in New Hampshire, which is my passion. And my students, I can't tell you how many times they select a Google Draw as their uh, project choice, as their to way to demonstrate their, their understanding without me even prompting them to. So uh, you'll see some great uses for it today. Uh, the reason I wanted to share this because you're going to see some fantastic products but the steps are simple and the software is free. So something here for everyone. I'm not going to assume that anybody, everybody attending um, is skilled in Google Drive. So you may not even know what Google Draw is. It's a graphical drawing tool in your free Google Drive. It, you can create, edit, and share just like you can with Google Docs. Um, and you access it by going into Google Drive and then just simply creating a drawing and naming it and getting to work. I'll show you briefly. You go to Drive, you click on New, go to the bottom, click on More, select Google Drawing, and voila, you're ready to create your first Google Draw. So if you were wondering what it is and where to find it, that's what the topic is today and several uses for it. Allison, really quick, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we do have the Q&A app enabled, correct? We do. Is that a question? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we have that um, ready to go. And if anybody is watching live and has questions, feel free to, to jump in with a question, and you will be able to answer it. All right, great. You do have to sign in um, to, to be able to ask a question. I don't know if people know that. Uh, Rose is here and Jason's here. Uh, would you consider including Twitter handles on your video nameplate? Oh, sure, we could do that. But also, uh, Jason, in the in the resources, if you click on the resources for the event, um, Jennifer and our my Twitter handle are there. 
So back to who will use draw. Jennifer and I were just talking about this before we started the hangout. Um, like everybody can use draw. And what's so exciting about it is uh, younger students, it gives them a, a real purpose to go in and use Google Drive. And I hear so many teachers who teach elementary school and they say, oh my gosh, we're going one-to-one -one Chromebook. What am I going to do? I need some ideas. Well, you already are doing things in the classroom, probably with paper. And Google Draw can be the solution to trans, uh, transferring uh, to the Chromebook situation or the online learning environment. In this workshop, because we can't cover everything that you could do with Google Draw, we're going to start with a little backwards design here. I'm not going to show you how to create a draw until the end. That way, if you're already skilled in the how-to piece, you can uh, go and take what you've got and, and make it work for you. If you are excited about what you see um, and you want to learn more, at the end, we'll demo how to get the job done. The two areas I want to focus on uh, today are Google Draw is digital and interactive and is an awesome tool for those worksheets. And Jennifer said earlier, oh my gosh, worksheets. And I, and I thought to myself, there's going to be people out there listening. They're going to say, what you, that's so yesterday. What are you talking about worksheets? Well, if you, if you go into schools around the United States, maybe around the world, teachers are still using paper worksheets. And with a Chromebook or with just access to the internet, you can replace that, that paper worksheet with something like a Google Draw sheet that the students receive in their Google Classroom that they access and then manipulate digitally. So you can create something like this in Google Draw, which you might have previously printed out in, and had each student work on with pencils and crayons, and they can click and drag and drop uh, their state's initial to the state, for example. So this Allison, is just an example of a work, how it could be used as a worksheet. Yeah. I just, I just want to interject really quick. And for a teacher who might be watching this, I have to say I've used, um, you know, there is a need um, sometimes to create worksheets. Let's just be honest. Um, if you want to, especially at the younger grade levels, like you mentioned, so if you wanted to maybe create a digital newsletter to send out to parents, or just a, a one a one page flyer uh, um, of some sort. For for me personally, using Draw, it's much easier to manipulate the elements on a Draw versus a Google Doc. So I just want to throw that out there and encourage, again, primary uh, teachers to give it a shot um, and and play with it. And you'll find that it's it's so much easier to move um, your your items and create shapes and just make some really um, powerful. Uh, those digital worksheets that sometimes you do still need them, but again, it's a it's a great way to begin that transition to a paperless environment and starting with that substitution level of the SAMR model. So it's so it's simple to use, and and we'll see that today. And I think that's um, the first step for a teacher to feel comfortable using technology. And once they've mastered that, and they feel as though they're um, the substitution phase is is mastered, they can move on to that next level and um, move up in the SAMR model. So I just wanted to throw that out there. You articulate things so well. Thank you. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, the overhead, I love this. I always, I don't know if you, do you remember, Jennifer, when everyone was freaking out because they were taking away their overhead projectors? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were like hiding them in closets so that they wouldn't take them away. Yeah. Um, the Google Draw, if you were a big fan of the overhead projector, um, the Google Draw is nice because it makes your projector interactive. So I'm going to show you just like with Venn diagrams and things. Because with Draw, you can share with your kids and they can all have access to it. Or you could have them each take turns at the computer. But it, your overhead is back, people. So we'll show you, give you some ideas on how to use it uh, for that. And then uh, we are talking about constructing knowledge. I'm going to show you an example of a high school biology student's work. Oh, I got a typo there. Um, where he literally started with a blank canvas and drew the nucleus of an animal cell, label and defined it from scratch. And I watched the process unfold and I witnessed firsthand how knowledge is constructed in Google Draw. Quite impressive. And then it's just a great option to uh, have as a product to demonstrate your understanding. We love giving students a choice. Hey, you love making a slide deck that's really going to help you go for it. But 
draw is another tool that can be quite powerful when it comes to demonstrating your understanding. So the, that's the first phase of the operation is to show you the examples of these digital and interactive worksheets. The second phase is, well, what about project-based learning, which I'm a huge fan of. This is my most cherished project of all time. It's called Project Adopt a Country. And students in eighth grade, which is a great time for them to master uh, Google Drive, like really master it, so that they can independently select products when they're in high school, and high school teachers don't have to teach it. But they, they select a country, and for the year, they study the country, and they use Google Docs to write their essays, and they use Google Sheets to create graphs. They use the slideshow. They use Google Maps. And for the timeline, this is why I love this, they use the Google Draw. And you can make a pretty beautiful product with that. And not only are you able to take a drawing, this is a Google drawing, and insert it into a Google site, but you can make hot links. So this student writes, some events are hyperlinked to further sources, click and explore. So you go down, you hover over, and you can see where the, my mouse turns into the, the clickable uh, mouse. And I click on the link, and it goes to the resource. How cool is that? That is awesome. I'm showing that project on Monday. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in, in the project itself, because it really can go anywhere, if you just Google, and I'll put a link into it as well, if you go to Project Adopt a Country, if you Google Project Adopt a Country, my teaching site is linked, uh, Project Adopt a Country, that kids actually refer to this site year round because um, students work at different paces. So if they're working, you know, some students might be working on the travel itinerary already while other students are still back on the statistics essay. So um, it's a pace pro uh, at your own pace project. So all the instruction is here on the site. The template, I'm going a little off, but the template that they use um, is linked here. All the instructions. So if they're working on the statistics essay, they click on the link. There's instructions, there's rubrics, there's samples for everything. So. Um, if they are not sure how to make a graph, there's a tutorial on how to make a graph in Google Sheets. Um, we even use visual rubrics sometimes to guide them, um, to give them a place to go. I'm just not showing up. Here's a, this is a, a checklist we use to have them check their work because we're not standing over their shoulder all year long, so they, they, they have this as a resource. Mm -hmm. So that's Project Adopt a Country. So if you're interested in where the project roots from, it roots from that, and then a link to the sample portfolio that this student made on Guatemala is there. Yeah, there's so many modifications of that too. I mean, uh, teachers could do a Project Adopt a State, you know. Um, or, you know, just competencies of a course. Um, mm -hmm. It could be for science labs um, and reflections. Yeah. Absolutely. I had a, I've had sixth grade kids uh, who are heading off to those um, nature's classroom. They create a site before they go, and they have the areas that they're going to study uh, at nature's classroom, and they take pictures, and then they come back, and they populate their uh, Google site with their experience. Awesome. All right, so that, um, that was a segue kind of off, off the beaten path, but how – how the, uh, the Google Draw integrates into the Google site for project-based learning, um, and also how you could use it to complement a doc. Now, in this case, I'm gonna show you, this is another uh, student uh, had to write um, some, it was like a homework assignment, not a full report, but like three paragraphs about a historical figure with a work cited page, which is really boring to most high school boys. But somehow adding in the element of creating a magazine article uh, cover or magazine cover in Google Draw prior to kind of get the juices flowing and to be a little creative makes the process a lot easier because as the student is having some fun making um, Ivan the Great's uh, picture in Google Draw, that student is also looking up information because they have to come up with their topics. So they're doing some pre-writing, some brainstorming while they're having fun creating this, what is a magazine cover. And they add it to their web clipboard and, the, and then they add it to a Google Doc by just simply clicking on the web clipboard 
hovering over the drawing that they want to put in and boom now a drawing is in a google doc so it's just a fun you can spice up what could be traditionally boring and dry um, mm -hmm. by adding um, draw to the project i see that as a great way to um, help students learn design principles as well so a big trend in education now is not just steam or stem education but steam education so bringing that artistic element into like you said uh, what otherwise might be something a student finds boring when you integrate the opportunity to be artistic students can really um you know their creativity can be unleashed and you can really help them become designers and creators and i love that yes and and you know what when you teach them how they can edit a google site to be more original, more of their own product, they are much more engaged in populating it and pursuing the, the curriculum uh, goals or topics that you want them to as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, and here's an example. So I, I, I'm gonna click on this link and, and open up a draw. This is actually for a you know Capital Area Center for Educational Support website. But you can see that in draw, you can create um, what could be a header for a website. Um, so by teaching the students how to do this, they can then create a really cool custom header for their site as well. And to get it in the site, I didn't mention this um, previously, so I'll mention it now, that any Google Draw can be downloaded as an image file. So a lot of times I'll just download a draw as a PNG file and throw it in a slide deck. If I download it now, I can go to uh, a website that I have click on edit site layout, and then I just hover over the header area here and you choose the file that you want to uh, insert as your header. And I think I have one here. All right, I'll grab it. And that could be the same process you would use in any website creation tool, correct? Like if, Absolutely. Like Blogger, so, if, you, if they were using Blogger, or if they were using uh, another web creation tool same process right exactly yeah yep. that's awesome yeah i used it to make a, a logo not a very good one but I, I used it to make a logo for a cloud camp project i was working on i'll show it to you and no, those see, fonts. see the limits of my creativity <laughs> uh, <laughs> <mine>. trust me <laughs> now I, those fonts that you're using too the fonts are part of draw uh draw correct you're not the fonts are part of draw but I don't know if people know this either is that if you click on um, the fonts like this is word art actually if you double click on it you can see that it's it's word art I clicked on insert when you click on insert word art a little pop-up comes up right and then you write in the words well you're not limited to what the fonts are on the list at the bottom there's a more fonts and there's right. thousands of fonts to pick from and you can literally sort them I always get a kick out of this by trending. Like, how geeky is that? Trending. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, then but you grab it and it's on your list. And once I add Kelly Slab here to my list, it's available in a Google Doc. It's available in my Google Slide Deck. I don't have to go and add that again. It's going to be there for me. Right. Yeah. Reason I mentioned that and I wanted you to show that is because I don't think a lot of teachers realize that. You know, they'll they'll say, "Oh, Google." is so limiting in terms of fonts and oh, I, yeah. I'm like no it is not you have no idea and you know you can do more than comic sans people <laughs> in fact that i say be, yeah, that, I should, that say, should be like wikipedia yeah. you, you can't use comments yeah comic i say sans. don't ever use comic sans again i don't care what grade you teach look for a comic sans uh, replication but i i'm always saying uh, no funny. to comic sans but yeah like I just, like I said, I don't think people even knew that it had these capabilities. So um, yeah. useful stuff for teachers, practical things, and also for students when they're creating. So I just wanted you to point that out. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm always thinking of like different twists on the same thing. Like looking at this logo, I can tell you, um, I'm thinking of like the parent-teacher organization once had a contest for the logo for the parent-teacher organization but even when you're studying curriculum topics you could have a logo you say you have to create a logo for something that you're studying for your country mm -hmm. um, so there's tons of things you can do uh, with google draw the logo concept could be used for a variety of purposes as well love it
Anyway, it's just so fun. But now we can get on with some specific examples. If you have not accessed the presentation yet, and I know some of you have, um, and I know some of you are already uh, accessing the uh, templates I have, I'm going to show you how this presentation is set up to, to be something you can take away and keep and have uh, all the all these things are accessible for you to grab and use immediately. Um, but before we uh, get there, uh, somebody did have a uh, question about how to change the the canvas, and you can do that. All you have to do is um, let's go here. Uh, no, I don't want to mess that up. Let's see. Oh, this is fine. Click here, and you can reshape the canvas. So the question was, can you make it so that it's 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 a different uh, you know size? Yes, you can reshape it this way. And then there's also a page setup area here as well. All right, uh, where were we? Oh, on to examples. So let me show you how this uh, slide deck works, so that when you want to grab a template, you know what to do with it. Uh, starting with my very favorite project. And the reason it's my favorite is because I love getting younger children into Google Drive uh, for authentic purposes. But I think the younger we teach them how to log in and uh, authenticate to their account with their own password, the better off we are. But you have to have a reason to go there. And it's so often that you don't have a reason to go to Google Drive with younger children and draw is the perfect segue. Now, I have to thank uh, Jimmy Emery up at Bartlett School in Bartlett, New Hampshire. We were working together one week, and we, were, uh, we wanted to use Draw with the kindergartners. And she said, oh, they're studying caterpillars and patterns. So brilliant. She uh, created this simple template. And we pushed it out to all the kids. And they got onto the, uh, the Google Draw. And they made, created their own pattern. So simple. Brilliant. Now I'm going to click on this because if you wanted to just grab this and, and run with it, you could just click on it and you'll get a view only copy. And then you could click on file, make a copy, and then it's your copy in your Google Drive. So if you'd like to make a copy of this right now and have your, maybe you have a, a toddler or a younger child that you want to have a test drive for you, go ahead, do that. Um, the idea was they came in and they had to create a pattern. So the caterpillars are down here. Um, the reason for that is so that they have something to reflect on for pattern. And then we show them how to click and then fill in the box and then click and then fill in the box. And you would think that this is so super simple. It is not. These kids are developing their fine motor skills, the click, the drag, they end up dragging it or deleting something and we get an opportunity to show them how to undo and undo um, other kids get are very skilled because they started playing with that paint app when they were two so they whiz right, right through it and then they start creating uh, thicker lines and different colored borders so you really can do a lot there's a, a broad depth you can do with the kids at this point but just think of all of the skills that they're learning there is a ton going on here um, and it looks very simple. And it is very simple to present and bring to them. It's awesome. You want to know how I got my picture to be a heart? Uh, you know, we, we're like kindred spirits because I was going to ask you to show the viewers, <laughs> how did you do that? And I'm thinking you use the uh, mask tool, maybe, you know? Yeah, and, and okay. I'll start out, I'll just take this moment to throw in a little learning here. The, the brilliant research tool that so many people don't know about, kids or teachers, anybody using Draw, you click on Tools and choose Research. It's also available in Docs and Slides. You can search the net for information, but you can also search for images. So if I look for Caterpillar, oh, wrong keyboard, Cater. Pillar. That's how I have to say it. I have to, I have to enunciate to spell. <laughs> so uh, I can search for an appropriate picture that I want to use, and then I can click and drag and drop it on the screen. Um, if you're on the template, you might not want to make a copy of the template right now because this is the, the actual template that uh, I'm sharing with you folks. Um, but here, now I can just click here. This is the crop tool. So if you click on this, you can crop. You know, it wasn't that long ago you couldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. All right. But next to this crop tool, and I show the students this, and they're like, oh, I didn't see that. The mask tool is right here, and I can make this into different shapes. So that's how you can get the shapes with your images. So if you want 
to make it a cloud or a square, you can. Then you can start playing with lines. So if I want a really thick line and have it be a different color, this is where the creativity comes in. This is where you can start making things look pretty cool. So this is a good skill to teach the kids as well as part of what you're doing with Google Draw. I have to say the students in my help desk program at Burlington High School, they actually showed me that, that masking capability. <laughs> I was like, that's so, that's so neat. So It is. It's pretty cool. And, and I think it, it just makes the slide decks that the kids produce better when they're working with images. Because even if you just take an image and make a simple rounded edge border, it just makes it look so much nicer. Right. And we were talking earlier before we went on air about, you know, using templates that are available in other tools which will remain nameless and why why you would want to use those is you and I don't really understand why um, when you have these capabilities to be creative and original right, right? yeah so, exactly love it caterpillar going so there's the recipe for the caterpillar um, and now I'm gonna whiz through these because there's really not a lot of talk I need to talk about this but here's your drag and drop shapes all right Again, click on it to access the template. Um, keep in mind that when I mentioned the overhead projector, this is what I'm referring to. I'm gonna sh we're gonna show you how to push out something like this through Google uh, Classroom so that every student gets a copy, but why not just put it up on the overhead uh, projector and project to your smart board or, and have the kids drag it and work on it collectively. So you have plenty of options. Uh, Renee Nolan shared this with me as part of uh, her drawing presentation, working with money. So you can get money images, um, have them make change. So that's very, very cool. That's a good collaborative activity. Uh, here's the map I showed you as an example. I love geography, so this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, warning, don't do this collaboratively with like a bunch of people. It's <laughs> a nightmare. <laughs> it's a good tip. <laughs> but it was a good time with about 20 teachers. Uh, it, Proving that it was better probably as an independent or a two two people max. <laughs> yep. This is that lower level, like the entry level of you know using it as a diagram to name. So you you saw how I could drop an image on the draw. So you go and you find an image and you you drop it in draw, and then you make a list of the key elements and have the students drag the name over to label the diagram correctly. So that's your DOK1 or DOK2. Then you're looking for DOK3 or 4, and I'll show you that uh, later where the student actually, he draws it, labels it, and annotates it. Cats and dogs, simple little collaborative Venn diagram you could do it on any topic. I like this, this idea so that you get the kid, the younger kids used to uh, w thinking like this. Um, but here's a template, simple Venn diagram, no explanation needed. Simple brainstorm topic development, simple diagram, no explanation needed. In every content area. Yeah, like anything, you know, what, what do we want the prom theme to be, you know, and then boom, 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 boom. You're having your class meeting and every, somebody says, oh, I want it to be, you know, islands That's of like, paradise. Yeah. And it takes seconds to create these kinds of things and then push them out, which is what I love. Yeah, and it's nice to have the templates. And you know, if you if you took this slide deck and just made a copy and, and then made a folder yeah. for drawings and just had it handy, this is five themes of geography. So you can see how a student could use this to to uh, do the five themes project. Here's an example: the kindergarten constructing knowledge looks so simple, but it's not. Um, give them a, this is a picture of a coniferous tree. So they're studying coniferous and deciduous trees. Um, and you give them the, the image if you want and a list of the key elements. So they started out with needles, trunk, roots, and branches over here and no drawing. And this is the end product. So uh, pretty, pretty cool what they come up with. This was the DOK three or four depth of knowledge. So instead of the student getting a picture of a cell and just dragging and dropping they start with a blank canvas and they're they're asked to draw label and define the nucleus of an animal cell <laughs> now we're talking <laughs> <laughs> it's very powerful very powerful those are some hot hot skills right there 
I, I tell you, you know, you look at it and you say, well, that doesn't look very nice. Well, it's not a paint application. It's a draw application. Right. So the student was limited in their options for what they could use to represent some of these complicated shapes. And they did a fantastic job. And what is good about this is that it takes time to think about it. And as you're thinking about it, you're looking and thinking and looking and thinking and you walk away with a much better understanding than you would if you just made a simple slide deck. And that's the key, deeper understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And trying to get away from so many slide decks. I mean, now that I'm, as I share a slide deck, but <laughs> there is a purpose for it. But this is an example of one of the options said make a slide deck. And this is not an appropriate slide deck uh, uh, topic in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, it brings me to my next topic. That was perfect. <laughs> Ditch that slideshow. I love the poster. I found this poster. What does this remind you of? Oh, yes. The, the, the physical the, tri the science poster. fair. Yep. yep. <laughs> and how many poster here. boards? How many poster boards did you work? Oh, well, you, your daughter's young. But when my kids were little, oh, my gosh, it was poster board. Uh, it yeah. wasn't poster board heaven. And I just went through the cellar through a bin and got rid of a whole bunch of them that I was clinging on to for dear life. I had to let go. But um, Yeah, there's definitely a place for them, just like the worksheet, like the physical worksheet. In, but, yeah. But let's, let's go beyond This was that. a slide deck assignment. Wow. The assignment in health class was to create a slide deck on like a, a public service announcement on uh, two myths and truths about water, how the body uses water, like five fast facts and tips for uh, preventing dehydration. And so this student chose Google Draw to make the public service announcement. And I thought this, is, this project should be Google Draw. And then after the students do their health public service announcement as one poster, then throw them all in a slide deck. And mm -hmm. then put them on your, um, your school's TV and you know, wherever you run those right ongoing slide decks but then make one collaborative slide deck out of everyone's public service announcement brilliant so this has the student has uh, taken a water an image of water dragged and dropped as the canvas background then used word art for myth and truth used uh, rectangular boxes with transparency so that in, in text boxes below the word art so there's a lot that went into this it didn't didn't come together that fast right but very effective the design principles, again, are just so evident in something like that. And a brilliant uh, way way to get the job done on uh, how the water, how the body yes, uses water. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> and effective. This is my favorite of the projects. Now, I have, Tim McMillan is the person who shared this through Google+, and I have a link to his blog post that explains how he set up the lesson plan. But this is not, this is a book report, right? This is a book report. Does this look like a book report? No, yeah, awesome. Isn't it beautiful? Yep. Oh my gosh, fell Very in love with that. Another cool. student's book report. So I'm he just has to do these, these book covers and there's links to his instructions here. And I even, um, he, I don't know if he provided the template or I made one because I needed to, to have, have it for class. Um, but literally you could you could tell the students, you know, you have to start from scratch But in this example, it might be better for you to frame the assignment With something like this and then push this out through Google classroom right. So that every student gets this and then they, they can delete the instructions as they fill in the in the details Just want to throw in one more thing. So we talk we're talking we've talked a little bit about substitution level But we get to that redefinition phase you know, if a teacher wanted to print those out, which I, I don't even have a printer connected to my device. I just, I don't print. But I understand that there are teachers, there's a time and a place where I really want to print and showcase my students' final project. So, if, Allison, could you go back to one of the student examples? Um, if somebody has iPads in their classroom and the teacher printed out that book cover, a teacher could use an augmented reality app like Erasma and a video of the student could pop up when the book cover is scanned and the student could give even more information about what they learned from reading that book. So that's awesome. Yeah, that is like mind blowing. So if the teacher wants to, you know, tells me I want to print because I want to integrate augmented reality and I want to create this, 
you know, um, AR gallery wall in the hallways during a parent open house. I'm all for that, you know, but printing out worksheets and just handing them to kids, you know, I, I think there are alternatives, but when I see these kinds of projects it, displaying student work, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that and then take it one step further so that the, the child can, you know, continue to showcase their skill and knowledge through that video and that overlay of, a, of an augmented reality That's experience. Awesome. Yeah, yeah they, the kids, that, that is like jaw dropping technology um, when the kids see that and, and teachers as well. But the other thing about it that I love is how simple it is to, to use. So I just wanted to throw that out there as an idea. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, was noticing a couple of questions in the in the um, in the thing about slide decks can loop. Yes, and um, I do refer to slide to shows, powerpoints, presentations, and slide decks as the same thing. So yes, and you can what you can do is have each each student can make some make one slide or make one uh, drawing and then import it into a shared presentation. So yeah. that is that can be done in seconds. Absolutely. I this have a question here too. Um, somebody wants to know where they can get the copy of the templates. Oh, they're right in the presentation, and okay. and if they just click on the um, resources for the for the event. Okay, that was from Wendy. In the presentation, yeah. yeah. Right. And we'll cover that again so that everyone has that. You know, uh, we're, we're over time too, but that's okay. We're over time. Yeah, that's okay. Is it? It's ten thirty-six. Just FYI. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Keep going. Um, yeah, I will finish up anyway because if people have to go, they can go on to something else and come back and watch later. Uh, this is the water cycle. I was saying how you can spice up a writing uh, with this magazine cover. Um, also, if you're teaching a, a simple concept like the water cycle, keep in mind that you can have students create an original drawing for something in Google Draw and then put it into a Google Doc if you wanted them to write a paragraph about it or something. So it's just a nice way to 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 add uh, understanding and, and creativity to anything. I showed you the timeline. I showed you the hotspots. Uh, I just wanted to mention that these are floating out there in the template gallery. They're made uh, by Russ Porches, but I think this digital chess thing is cool because so many elementary school classrooms have a chess board for like indoor recess or intercession, and two students can share a chess board in Google Draw and play chess over time. And the nice thing is they can't cheat because there's a revision history in, 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 the, in the Google Draw. So if, you, if you're like, wait, Tommy, Tommy did something, all you have to do is go to the revision history and go, yep. He sure did. That's so awesome. That's kind of cool. So, I mean, chess is critical thinking, but I mean, you could have digital chess club. <laughs> Very and cool. Here's Allison and Cameron playing checkers. You know, he's always on the other side of the house. So, I've got him going in a quick game of checkers every once in a while. Um, so, it's just a couple of templates that are available. I'm not going to do that. Uh, story flow chart. I've had several teachers say, oh my gosh, I need that. So, here it is. Here's the template. And then just to summarize, like recapping what you were saying, Jennifer, it's easy, it's engaging. Anybody can use it for any subject. It's interactive. You can publish attractive documents. You can fulfill your goal of having a paperless classroom environment and it's free. Reason enough for me. In my first 10 years in sales and marketing, this is this was uh, the motto. This is what I was told. Keep it simple, stupid. And I think that uh, draw fits to the bill. Keep it simple. Keep it fun. Learning doesn't have to be complicated. I think there's, uh, there's this belief system out there that it, you're not learning unless it's difficult or complicated. And that is just simply not true. I don't believe a word of it. So I'm a big fan of easy. I could not, <laughs> agree. I could not agree with you more. I mean, if you have to buy a book, to learn the tool, move on to a different tool. I mean, right. who has, time is such a precious commodity for a teacher. And, you know, being a, a tech integration person, I respect that, I empathize with that. And that is why, like you, I advocate for these tools that are intuitive and, and easy, but at the same time, they promote such 
high level thinking for students. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're t you mentioned app smashing a little, a few minutes ago in terms of creating the drawing and then putting it into a Google doc. You're using multiple apps to create an original product and our students do need to be able to do that, use multiple types of applications because that's going to be an expectation of the real world when they start their careers. So right. um, integrating multiple tools, I think, is higher order thinking in and of itself. So getting kids to think about the appropriate tool to use for the task and exposing them to draw as a choice, like you mentioned yep. earlier, I think that's so important. And I am excited to now go back to my digital literacy class and do some of these things as we, yeah absolutely yeah. challenge kids, challenges challenge the kids it's fun to see what they can do I, yeah the magazine the magazine cover project that's great i love that i was i just told you about my student in my um computing for college and oh, careers yes. they have to create business cards and they're they're asked to do it in microsoft word and they generally get a template and then they pass it in and uh, my students are allowed to use whatever tool fits to, to do the job. Most of them choose Google Docs and Drive for, for most of their projects. Some of them use Word. Very few use Open Office. But this student's always trying something different. And uh, she passed in her business card. She made it in Google Draw. And I was like, that is awesome. But mm -hmm. the competency or the assignment is to have a printable sheet when she's done. But how easy was it for me to leave? Here's where the commenting goes in. So she shared it with me in Google Drive. And I get it. I, I can go in and leave a comment. So I leave a comment, great, download as a PNG and then populate the business card template. It needs a printable page of many cards. So I just give her a link. I went and found a, one of the quick links. So this is like taking absolutely no time for me to help her. It's not delaying her from getting the job done. Right. And then she grabs the template and it's as simple as file, download as, I'll say PNG, I usually just choose PNG, and then just click, drag, and drop. Boom, 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 done. Job done. Yep. So, I mean, nothing pre-planned, all on the fly. Um, interesting. All right, so um, do you have time? Do we have time to do a quick how-to? I, I do, sure. All right, so do I. So what we're going to do is um, I'll use the... Um, I'm going to call this up instead of starting from scratch since we're low on time. I do have tutorial video tutorials built into this presentation at here where it says how that I'm not playing for you, but they're there just in case you have the presentation and not the hangout available uh, or handy for you. So we've created a draw. We click on file new. We create a draw. This is word art. So I just double click to edit it, to insert it. I clicked on insert uh, word art and then I called it parts of a plan. If I want to modify uh, the word art, you know, I can fill and change the line color, which we covered previously. These are text boxes, and I have the text boxes down here for petals, leaves, stem, and eye. And in this instance, I could ask students to draw and label the parts of a plant, and here I have the image here. So, Let's say that that's going to be the goal. And Jennifer's a student in my class, so she's going to get this assignment, and uh, she can she's going to share her screen. <laughs> or actually, Jennifer, I'll just show them how I can access the doc after you open it up. Okay, sure. All right. So here I have the parts of the plants ready to go. I'm ready to to make sure that all of my students have a copy of it. I go to my Google Classroom, and this isn't a classroom session, so you'll have to go learn about that if you aren't aware. And I create this assignment. You can see I already have a number of drawing assignments here, but I'm going to show you how I can create and push it out. So I click on assignment, and I call it parts of a plant. Parts of a plant. And this is a great way to get these docs shared with kids, uh, younger kids. Oh my gosh, it just makes sharing and accessing so easy. I click on the Google Drive link and I go ahead and grab my parts of a plant that I just created. Um, let's see. That would require me knowing where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did I call it parts of a plant? A plant. This is good. You just did you just make it? 
No. Um. Oh, all documents. So sorry. Yep. All documents. I couldn't see the folder. So you have to know where it is. Um, if you have 10 or 15 or 20,000 documents. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> yeah. uh, Google training. There you are. Drawing. Story okay. Sorry for life. the delay. I was starting to get flustered with all the pressure. Drawing. No pressure. Yeah. I was feeling so pressured. No pressure. Okay. Add. All right. So now I have it. I've added it. But what's really important is I don't want students viewing the file. I want to make a copy so each one can edit the file. And now I click on assign. Close it and then. And Jennifer uh, should be able to access that in her classroom. So I'll just keep screen sharing because I'm I'm in Cameron, who is also a student. He receives the assignment and clicks on the link. And you, you can want. And then you would just click on um, the drawing to open it up. So this is Cameron's. It will soon be named Cameron Burns, part of a plant. And he can begin drawing. So this is where the student uh, would come in and start drawing. Now, how are you doing, Jennifer? Have you accessed it? Hold on. Do you want me to share my screen? No, I just want you oh, to go okay. ahead into the doc because what I'll do now is Jennifer's at, in her class, in her house, but in my classroom, <laughs> and she's got her assignment. So I'm going to go as the teacher now, and I'm going to click on the link to the assignment. And I want to look at what students have opened and gotten to work on this doc. So you can see I have a lot of students in here, but now if I click on folder, the draw is here. Cameron's accessed it. Jennifer, have you? I have, I'm have. i having a little oh. tiny technical issue right, All right. now. It's no problem. Me. So you <laughs> go ahead. Uh, just continue what you're doing because I have Cameron here as a backup. So Cameron, I can see what Cameron has accomplished thus far. Once I open up Cameron's doc, he can see that I'm in the doc. Uh, I say doc, draw. Um, I could even leave a comment and say, do you need help? So I could say, oh, that's great. Great start. I always, I always like to highlight the fact that sharing uh, documents out through Google Classroom means that you can give instant feedback. So you can shape the learning process. You can see what students having trouble. You can cheer them on once they start adding leaves and petals. So this student might go and, and grab a shape for the petals. So I can go to shapes. And this is where you start teaching them how to be creative, you know, how to make raindrops and things. So I'm going to do a petal. And then you teach them, oh, control C for copy, control V for paste. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many teachers come to tech workshops and do not know that. So don't assume that your kids do. It's If somebody hasn't shown you, you don't know that control C is copy and control V is paste. Um, and that on a Mac is command, by the way. So you can see how this is coming together. I'm obviously in here as the teacher doing the work for the student, but the revision history is going to show that the teacher did the work for the student. <laughs> right. I'm working um, my plant now, and it's all right. Um, quite embarrassing. So okay, I, I let's go see what let's go see <laughs> how on. Jennifer's doing. You're um, go. Oh boy! All right. I'm going to take a look. Oh, there we are, Jennifer. Yeah, I got one petal going. All right. There you are. Oh, nice work. Love the colors. Um, this is hard. <laughs> I know. That's why I say it teaches great skills. But it's fun, and it has so many purposes. Absolutely. I'm going to look at that while you're uh, creating uh, your plant, show people some of the features of uh, working with the draw. I'm going to look for the last minute questions and then we'll uh, say our goodbyes. Um, I know we were scheduled till 1030, but I, hopefully it wasn't a problem that we went till 11, knowing that people could go uh, when they needed to go. Will one of you please tweet the link to your resources, including Tim McMillan's template, please? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. If you go to, here, here's the deal. If you go to treasure trove, gafe.com, if you go there, all my resources are there, including the page for WhizBang Draw. So if you want an easy way to get to the uh, to that, I'm going to go to it right now. This is the I, easy. I'll, 
treasuretrovegappy.com, yeah. boom, click on whiz bang draw and the presentation is there. All the links for everything, including Tim McMillan's uh, template and his lesson plan are in the presentation. So that's probably the easiest way to get there. But if you're on the Education on Air site, it, you should know that um, every session, um, Education on Air, every session that you go to has a, a, a link to the presenter's resources. And on I populated that page with mine. So if you go to um, if you're on the on the website and you're on let's say my session site which is under anyone and you click on whizbang draw it brings up the square here and it says access session materials and when you click on that you can see that Jennifer and I our contact information our Twitter handles a link to the presentation is right up at the top but all my other resources are available under uh, treasure trove uh, gaffy.com um, it's just a hodgepodge collection of all my uh, my links and presentations that I build from um, and anything you find on my website please feel free to make a copy of it if you want to like if you want to make it your own presentation I don't mind at all so what what's mine is yours uh, Google is a sharing community so I don't ever really feel like I have original ideas I feel like I just uh, learn new things from other people and I, I make a collection of what I think is cool and, and try to share it with others. So, um, you are not giving yourself enough credit, Ms. Malika. You have <laughs> very amazing ideas. So right. it's very generous of you to allow us to use your materials, but don't sell yourself short because you're, you're uh, definitely um, – You've been a mentor to me and an inspiration, so I love working with you, and this has been awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, and me, Miho Tech, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming, and thanks for your compliments. Um, looking through for some more questions. Once you're done off air, uh, that information disappears, so where do you find it then? You know what I would do if I were you? Make a copy, because it's a view-only doc for you, but you can make a copy of it. Or go to the links that I shared in that doc and just bookmark them. Um, let's see. I'm going to tweet. Make... I'll tweet this out too. So if anyone's watching, um, I'm JL Sheffer on Twitter. So I will tweet out links too. And I'll use the hashtag uh, Google EDU on air as well as GAF. Um, so if you're well versed in Twitter, you can just grab you know, it from there. There's four votes. Uh, I don't know if that's a lot or not, but there's four votes on can we integrate drawing to produce answers for a Google form question. And I don't think you can put images in a Google form question answer part. You can put, what am I trying to say? You can put an image in a Google form, right? but you can't put it in the question. You can put an image and then the question. right? But you can't put the question and then make the images like part of the multiple choice. They need to fix that because that would be useful. That would be awesome. Select, I, select the picture. Right, exactly. Especially with uh, math formulas, if you could just do a snippet and boom, boom, boom. Yes. Um, so that's the answer, um, Dr. Nassar. And yeah, uh, but if you make a Google drawing, you can download as a PNG and import it into the Google form. So if that was your question, can I get a Google drawing into form? Absolutely. I would download it as a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, changing, we covered, uh, I think we covered everything. So thanks for coming, everybody. Um, thanks for coming, Jennifer. And Thank you for having me. Hope, every, hope everything aired okay. You know, um, wait a sec. Uh, did you make any more progress with your flag? I made a stem and a couple leaves. <laughs> well, let, let's take a look at that real My quick. My students can please don't screen share. <laughs> oh, you! I need to do that. <laughs> My students can do a much there better job. There you go. Than I, can. I think oh, it's you know, lovely. It, I I just sort of imitated the image that was on the screen. That was. Fun. I think it's great. You did a good job. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, Absolutely. And I know that the next time Google does education on air, you will be presenting 
Um, you should definitely, educators, you should follow Jennifer. She is the most up-to-date, informed, passionate educator I've met in my career. I would follow her and learn from her. That's Stop. what I would do. Thank I'm not you. kidding. So That's just the truth. For that. <laughs> Passion, I try. I try to keep up. It's tough because there's so much going on every day. Um, but I am passionate about these these topics. So. Yep, and she's still young, so you know she's yeah. got she's got a few more energetic years. Oh, sure. Her, so. let, uh, let me just plug really quick a Massachusetts gag event. Um, it should have been a part of this, but it's not. It's happening on Monday, and at six thirty p.m. And it's advanced Google Forms and add-ons, and I'm the facilitator. And we'll be learning from uh, two Google trainers, uh, Jed Judkins and Eric Erickson. And it is going to be a really geeky session. So I've been tweeting out a link to that. So if you feel as though you've mastered the basics of forms and you're looking for to level up, check that out because it's going to be pretty awesome. How would they find that to go to you, your page on uh, Google Plus? The yes, easiest, they, yeah. yes, they can go on my page on Google Plus. We have, I think there's quite a few people that um, have said yes, they're going to be there. But um, Jen and Eric are, are Google Form gurus. And I'm excited to um, look at some of the add ons like Autocrat and Formula, Formula and Form Ranger. Um, V lookups, they're, they're just going to go as in depth as they can. We have an hour scheduled, so I know it's not draw, it's an advanced topic. Um, but you know, no, it's, it's good. It's I have to, um, I'm going to do one quick screen share before we go because we didn't address copyright and somebody did ask about that, and I meant to show it. All right, um, can you that, see? Are you looking at my screen right now? Yes. All right. So just real quick, guys, uh, we didn't address that. And I wanted to show you that like the Ivan the Great picture. I'll just use that as an example. When you go into tools, the research tool and, and search images, you can I'm going to search for Ivan the Great. Ivan the Great. But I can narrow the search to what is free to use. So just no, I didn't mention that. But if you if you do that, and you're going to publish to the web and you're looking for that, then go ahead and filter it that way. That's all. There's that digital citizenship piece right there. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's just so much that we could share. There's so much to talk about that you can't possibly cover it in one hour session. But right. hopefully if everybody who's, whether you're a novice or uh, you're a pro and, and that you've been doing this for years, no matter where you were at, you came here for a reason. I hope you got something to take away with it. I know I did. Thank you so All right. much. Okay, so have fun at Canopy Lake with your daughter, and okay. uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you as well. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye.